Body cam footage has been released from um, 2019 after uh, uh, Minnesota resident Janice Hodge uh, back in the summer of 2019 was pulled over by uh, an officer. And she's since been rewarded a $100,000 uh, settlement because within a minute of him pulling her over, his gun was drawn and it was locked in on her. And her violations were driving with a cell phone in her hand and improperly wearing her seatbelt. I want you guys to remember that as we watch what he did here. Let's watch. License, proof of insurance, please. Can I ask why you're pulling me over? Yes, uh, two reasons. One, you have your phone in your hand. Yep, because I'm using my GPS to drop my food off. Yep, so and then when I drove past, you didn't have your seatbelt on. Because my seatbelt, I wear it like this. Yep, which is incorrect. So could I have your okay, driver's but license, my license, please? My seatbelt is on. Hold on, this uh, guy just pulled me over for using my GPS. And I said, this police officer just pulled me over for using my GPS. Let me ask you something. Can you turn your car off, please? Why do I need to turn my car? Turn it off. Step out of the vehicle right now. Step out of the vehicle right now. Put your hands up. on me. Put your hands up. on me. Put your hands up. on me, baby. Step out of the car. Out the window. Yep. Take off. Take off your seatbelt. Take off your seatbelt. Hey, hey, Step out of the car. Can you get, hold on. Just calm down. Calm yourself down. Step out. Calm yourself down. Step out of the car. Calm down. Step out of the car. Calm yourself down. Step out of the car now. I will rip you out if you do not step out of the car now. Step out of the car right the car now. Why? Step out of the car because I'm giving you a low, a lawful order to step I'm out. I'm okay, my attorney's on the phone. What'd you say? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna rip you out of the car What'd then. What'd you say, babe? He's threatening to touch me. I'm at North. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. I'm at Northeast. North. Can I put you? Can I get my hands up? I don't have no. Out of the car. I don't have anything. Why are you pointing the gun at me? Stop out. No, you stop. I'm not shooting. What the is wrong with you? Put your hands behind. That officer's name is uh, Calvin Pham, and uh, wait till you hear what his explanation was as to why he did all of that. So, um, so let's start with some of that now. So, his, the officer later wrote in his incident report after what you just saw there that he believed Janice may have had a gun after he noticed a permit to carry uh, to carry card in her wallet. But Pham never wrote in his report that he ever saw a gun. Now, um, what she also said when she was being report, uh, uh, interviewed about this was, you didn't see a firearm, you didn't ask if I had a firearm, you just reacted to something that you had seen in my wallet, is what she said. And it, she added that she does have a valid permit to carry license, but did not have a gun that day. And lastly, on this particular part, in his report, Officer Pham wrote that he saw Hodge reach into her purse, reach her hand near her waistline and in between the seat and center console, leading him to believe that she was trying to conceal something or was reaching for a weapon. So was it that she was reaching towards the center console for something like a weapon or a waistline, which none of that happened by the way. And, or was it that you saw a concealed carry permit, which is a legal concealed carry permit to be able to carry a weapon. None of it has to make sense. It's just, hey, I saw this woman. I didn't like that she was pushing back on uh, the reasons that I pulled her over, which yeah, she was wearing her seatbelt incorrectly. She was holding her cell phone. So therefore that turned into a threat somehow, Sue Ann. I mean, listen, I don't think it was the imminent carry weapon license at all. I think these officers are just scary nowadays. Like that's their new thing. Everything made me feel scared. I'm like, why are you a police officer? Why are you going into a field where you have to deal with people every day? Where you might be in an actual dangerous dangerous situation because this is just a traffic stop. Nothing yeah. dangerous about that. Lady is a, a driver delivering food, so not very dangerous. But being in potentially dangerous situations, and you're so afraid that you pull out a weapon on a lady for a traffic stop. It, it, I've said it before, throw every single law enforcement officer in Minnesota, throw them all away, retrain them to do something else. Postal service, anything, anything but be police officers because they don't have it together. They have Kim Potter, they have Derek Chauvin, like all the bad police officers for whatever reason, Apparently, go work in Minnesota, and I feel bad for their citizens. Yeah, a, a Janice did point out that she was immediately thinking about what had happened before. She's in Minnesota. <laughs> you know, let's not forget how this continues to happen over and over again. Now, um, you talked about how you can't be a police officer if you're just so scary all the time. Well, uh, Officer Pham did at least acknowledge that afterwards. And the following month, after she was awarded uh, the settlement, um, he had resigned from the park police. Let's go to that uh, detail. So, in a separation form which was obtained by this local station, doesn't list any reason for why he left the department. And that's odd how that works. Also, Pham's personal file makes no mention of the traffic stop or any discipline related 
to the July 2019 incident, neither the park police nor the park board superintendent would answer questions about the traffic stop and what happened in that aftermath and simply said in a statement, the settlement speaks for itself. So in other words, yeah, we already took care of it. I mean, we gave the lady some money. I don't know why you guys are bothering us. Yeah, he's gone. We don't want to talk about that anymore. Let's sweep this under the rug and not act like this is a consistent problem. Now, really fast, because ah, we did a story yesterday. We don't have to show it, but we did a story yesterday about um, down. It was down in Florida, actually, Suhan. And uh, this female officer pulled over this uh, this candidate, this Republican candidate for Congress, I believe. And he was giving her the very, very similar type of pushback. I'm holding my cell phone and he was speeding. And he was giving her pushback, telling her he's gonna call her supervisor. That lady that entire time kept her calm, uh, uh, made sure that everything that she needed to give him and cite him and, and he added one extra ticket by not producing his uh, registration. He reached across the car, reached into his glove box, did all those threatening things that Officer Pham somehow thought Jenis was doing. There's a way you can handle these things, especially when someone doesn't wanna talk to you as an officer, because many people don't like being pulled over, no one does. But there's a way you can respond that isn't pull out your gun multiple times on this woman because she has a permit to carry a weapon. It's, I, I don't see just, how I mean, I'm gonna just say the quiet part out loud. Obviously, you know, she's a black woman, and apparently the officer is weaponizing her skin color because that was the only weapon in the car. There was nothing <laughs> threatening. And in order to use deadly force, there has to be imminent force being threatened against the officer. There was none other than her sitting there and giving him pushback. So, you know. I'll say the quiet part out loud, it's cuz she's black. She's driving while black, so let's pull out a gun. I mean, even his treatment of her and pushing her to the ground and all that stuff, it's like something so simple as a traffic stop because he perceives her to be on the phone. She could lose her life just like that. And she actually in the video is trying to calm him down. She's like, hey, relax, relax, cuz she's probably running all these scenarios through her head, Philando Castile, all these things and thinking her life is in danger and a citizen is being forced to have to de-escalate a situation instead of the trained officer that's supposed to de-escalate the situation. It's almost like it's possible to teach someone to de-escalate, especially when they're in position of authority and have the gun.